John Sperlin from the Green Mountain Rangers. Uh, we got a couple requests to go through some of our helmet and night vision setups. Uh, so we have a good sampling of all the different types of night vision mounts that are commercially available, and as well as different configurations with all the Wilcox and Rotos or a standard USGI mount. So we're going to do a quick video summarizing the uh, high points of each one. All right, so what we have on the table, uh, you have uh, five different helmet setups with uh, the night vision that we are currently running. These are generally uh, AN PFS, PBS 14s. Um, we have a PBS 15 set at the end. Um, each one has a different configuration, but we're just going to talk about the mount right now. Uh, this one is utilizing the standard uh, Rhino arm and J arm. Um, it's got a lot of wobble to it. Um, the uh, fine points for focus and uh, tensioning are not that great. They loosen up. Um, the problem with that is that when you're running around a lot, this uh, is kind of wobbling and you know you really don't have that good focal point on your eye. So uh, you know it's kind of annoying, so that's why we usually upgrade up to uh, the better mounts and the better J-arm. Uh, this one can be utilized for left or right eye by loosening uh, the uh, front screw and the knob will flip over for left or right eye dominance. It's got certain pre-cut grooves where the night vision will lock into. So if, it's, if your eye doesn't fit naturally into one of those, you're kind of adjusting your helmet around a little bit to work in yourself around your equipment so it's not as good. We added on the Nerotos adapter shroud base plate. Um, this would usually be going on standard helmet, but we added that on so we could utilize our uh, Nerotos shrouds. All right, the next one we have, uh, the next modern mount that they just released after the uh, GI standard mount. This is the Nerotos. Uh, TATM arm or Tatum arm. They added a, a couple really nice features to this that uh, made it uh, really comfortable for the end user and much more functional for uh, people who are running night vision for a long period of time. Um, instead of having it just tensioned where you could just grab the, uh, the arm and flip it down uh, when you wanted it, uh, it's bad because if you're running full speed, I've had the night vision flip down on me or if I bumped into it, uh, it would flip up on me. So um, it's, a, it's a good point, to, I guess, for uh, breakage on the knot. If you're really smashing something, it's going to give a little bit, but um, I'd rather it be under tension the whole time. This one's real nice because it has a push button, so all you need to do to flip down your knot is push the button in, and it has a tactile lock, so then it will not lift up until you hit the button to release it back into the stowed position. Uh, also, this is starting to utilize a Wilcox dovetail mount. Um, the standard uh, dovetail mount from Wilcox is designed that's much lower profile than the regular J-arm, and um, this is the Rhino mount that will lock into uh, the standard base plate. But the Wilcox arm it utilizes a much low, lower profile uh, base plate, more surface area, and it has a nice tactile click in, and when it sits in there, it's uh, virtually wobble free, and a very nice release. And instead of having a arm where this one you can just hit that accidentally and the night vision is going to come out. This one actually has a roller bar that you have to roll this plate down to uh, hit the release. This one also is starting to utilize the Wilcox arm, uh, which is, it has two points of function. It has a QD release to kick the night vision from left to right eye very fast. Um, when we get into the IMVG arm, you'll see how that comes into play. But it's uh, when it locks in place, it's got uh, almost virtually no wobble. Uh, there's a little bit of wobble in this uh, mount, uh, but you know when this is really down, it's uh, actually really sturdy. Another thing that this also has, it has a axis mount, so you can raise and lower the shroud assembly to, to see where it wants to fit on your head, uh, depending on how high you sit your shroud. Um, it's better so you can uh, adjust it up and down on a vertical and horizontal axis. Okay, the next mount that we're going to go over, this is the uh, Nerodos AKA2 mount. Uh, very similar to the Tatum arm, uh, almost similar in uh, profile off the helmet. Uh, just got a couple of added features that made it uh, a little bit nicer. What they added was a third setting instead of just stowed and down, they have this uh, up, you know, uh, this midsection, uh, which kind of lets you have the night vision floating out in front of you. Pretty good, I guess, if you're in a vehicle and uh, you don't want the night vision so, uh, so high up, up above your head, smashing it into uh, you know, the door frame when you're getting in and out. Uh, you can kind of have it floating, sitting in front of you, and just kick it down real fast, which is a, you know, a nice feature. Uh, again, it's dovetail. It utilizes the Wilcox arms. They're similar to the Tatum arm. It has all the same features for adjust adjusting the axis. 
to get the uh, release off this one, it is a push button on the top. So you're going to hit that push button and slide forward. It's a much smaller button, but then it's going to click in like so. The next mount we're going to go over is the Nerodos IMVG arm. Uh, this one is pretty uh, modern. It's got a bunch of different features on it. It's a revolutionary arm in the sense that it kind of doesn't fit the same style or profile that the other mounts that we've reviewed. Um, this one is unique in, this, in the fact that no longer does the, your goggle need to be floating around your head, uh, out uh, away from you where it's kind of, you feel the, the weight of it more and uh, the counterbalance of it. Uh, this arm actually allows the night vision to become part of your helmet, almost in your mission profile. So it's a much smaller package, keeps it real tight, real sturdy, and uh, I definitely don't feel the night vision as much when I have it stowed when I'm using this IMBG arm. Utilizing the Wilcox uh, J-arm, so you still have the capability from going left to right eye with the push of a button. It doesn't have a feature where you have to push button to release the arm down, so it's all done under tension, but it definitely has more force needed to put the night vision up and down so compared to the regular GI mount. This mount also has a force over barrier, so if you're uh, running into a room and you smash this on something, um, the night vision will kick up out of the way and so that it uh, will not do harm to your goggle. So it's uh, another feature, and again, the same thing, if you run into a room and you want to hit it up on the... Uh, it up, it's going to kick up out of the way. So it's uh, a nice feature to have. Uh, it's going to protect your night vision a little bit. Uh, but I like it in the sense that I can run it up on my head and have the night vision almost in a nice profile in the goggle where I don't feel it. Um, instead of having it in a case where if I had the uh, Tatum, uh, it's running out, you know, more in front of my head. It's a bigger target for someone to hit. And, uh, you know, I definitely feel more instead of having uh, it floating. It's, you know, really nice self-contained in my helmet. And uh, all I have to do when I want to kick it out is hit the button first, the Wilcox arm locks in, click, and down, and then I'm ready to rock. Okay, this is the, uh, the last mounting system that we have. This is the Wilcox L4 G30 uh, with PBS 15s. Uh, this is the most modern setup uh, that we're running currently. Uh, the finer points about this mount is, again, it uses the more Neuroto style uh, push button uh, and click down like the, uh, the Tatum arm and AKA2 um, comes in tan. The, uh, the horizontal adjustment is uh, you know, a very nice and firm bar that you have to uh, click over and then the night vision will uh, slide up and down depending on the height uh, that you want to sit it on your head. Uh, and then just flip that switch back into a place and then it's locked. It's not moving anywhere. There's almost no rattle in this mount at all. This body for the PBS-15 has a built-in dovetail, so there's no J-arm necessary. It's built right into the body, and it clicks like so right into the, uh, the mounting system. Uh, this mounting system is unique in the sense that there is uh, no release for the, uh, the rhino arm itself. It's fixed permanently to this mount, and then you screw the mount directly into the helmet. So uh, it's just one more point of contact that you don't have another joining piece, so it's almost virtually wobble-free. So if you want to take your night vision off, you would stow it accordingly. The, uh, the mount is going to be always sitting on the helmet. It cannot come off. And uh, so when you lock it down, throw your 15s on there. They're clicked in. Again, we have it dummy ported. So uh, this mount is great in the sense that for a big goggle setup, uh, you can kick this in your uh, profile of your helmet. And again, it's not as obtrusive as it would be when you have them on another goggle system. If you were to put these, this setup on the Tatum arm or the uh, AKA2, you'll see that these goggles float a little too high up over the helmet. So when you have them, uh, it's a little bit high up over your head. Uh, instead of being more uh, as part of the helmet, you can see the distance between the mount and the, on the shroud. So, uh, you know, it's just a little bit bigger of a target. You, uh, you see it a little bit more floating up over your head, and uh, the weight of it definitely gets to you. And especially if you're going to kick this into the intermediate setting out in front of you, you know, it's definitely, you know, a lot of goggle out in front of your helmet. To adjust the distance away from your face, just pinch two bars, slide it back and forth like so and find the most comfortable position. Again, it has the axis of angle, so you can adjust uh, for each user. 
And uh, this is the Wilcox L4 G30 mount with PBS 15s, uh, another uh, great modern setup that we run. All right, we're going to just talk about some differences that we run in the uh, PBS 14 setups. Um, these are both AN PBS 14s, both ITT, pinnacle tubes, uh, Gen 3 auto gated, and so it's you know the nicest tubes that you can get. Really crisp at edge. Uh, it's got the brightness control so that you can come into a lit room and it's not going to bloom or wash out your nods. If you look at the body type, there's a couple different configurations. Um, this one runs on two AA batteries in this body housing. This is now the older style. They've now switched over to pretty much all making um, one type AA battery. I guess um, you know they save a little bit of space, but uh, it reduces weight a little bit. Uh, but performance is exactly the same. Uh, another thing that we've added to our goggles that makes it unique and real uh, durable is we put aim point covers on the front lenses and um, we actually custom make our own Lexan shields for the front of the goggle so you can take direct hits right on your lens um, and it's not going to do any damage to your goggle whatsoever. So it's uh, you know fully safe for airsoft use, you're fully protected and uh, you know, still see perfectly clear as you would right through the factory issued glass housing. The difference between the Lexan shield and the glass sacrificial lens is the lens is not meant for impact. It is meant for um, getting dust on it, where the Lexan shield is super durable against abrasion as well as impact. So if you took a round on the glass shield, it would shatter it and probably shatter your MEG lens. And then you'd have you know, a $3,500 optic that's rendered completely useless. Uh, so the Lexan Shield is a must if you're going to be running these in-game. Another thing that we added is the Wilcox Amber Filters on the rear of the goggle. Uh, it's great for when you're wearing MVGs for a couple hours on end. The green bright light really gets to you. Some people start to get headaches from it. Uh, it's just annoying. So this Amber Filter reduces the amount of light that's uh, put out to the end user. And um, it kind of puts a, a yellow hue on the image. But uh, you still see everything just as crisp. It also is made of full polycarbonate Lexan, so if you get a regarded impact on the rear of the lens, it's also protected, just an added layer of protection. This kind of re reduces uh, the amount of uh, dust that'll be going onto your uh, VMS shield or your MVG rear lens. VMS shield is another added lens that you can put on the rear of your goggle that has fog protection. It's got a nice rubber uh, bump cap, so it's uh, you know nice and comfortable when you're wearing it, uh, sitting it against your goggles. It's just got a, you know, a, a really great feature that uh, we recommend to everyone who's going to be running MVGs. Pretty much uh, the same with the PBS 15s. The 14s have an adjust for uh, focus in the front and rear uh, apertures. So the front cap, we have the aim point cover on. So if you want to focus on something close, just give it a little, little bit of a twist. You'll, uh, the image will crispen up. And when you want to see a uh, greater distance again, just flip it back the other way and you'll find the nice focal point. It has the rear uh, eye depth uh, setting, so depending on um, where it's sitting on your mount, you can adjust uh, how far the uh, rear lens is uh, sitting away from your eye, so it's another uh, focus point. Um, same thing on the 15s. Um, you have two front adjustments. Each monocular is independent, and same thing with the rear. You're going to want to get auto-gated night vision goggles. Auto-gated means that uh, it's, the tubes are smart in the sense that they'll allow a certain number of light through the tube instantly and then adjust. So if uh, someone uh, shined a surefire at you or a really bright flashlight, uh, a non oo gated set would either bloom out, uh, the image would become black, you get that burn in image on the tube because it's letting too much light go through the ion barrier and burn your uh, intensifier tube. Where these, um, it controls the amount of light that's letting through the tube instantly so you can still see that image and it'll do no damage to your night vision goggle. Uh, all the modern night vision that we run are all auto-gated because uh, you're running in and out of a lit room um, or to a dark area, instantly to a, a lighted area, so you're gonna need a uh, night vision goggle that's smart enough and be able to handle all the different settings of light. Uh, one debate you'll hear is uh, which eye you should wear your night vision goggle on. Um, it's up to the user, pretty much. If you wanted to um, wear it on your left eye, you wouldn't be wrong. If you want to wear it on your right eye, you would not be wrong. I wear it on my dominant eye. I wear it on my right eye. I find it uh, much easier for me to sight down the gun, either using my EOTech or uh, a lasering system. Um, this 
setup I find more, much more comfortable even when I'm walking around. Um, some of the other guys on the team wear it on your left eye. Uh, good thing about it is you got to try it, use it, see what works for you. Having the ability of the Wilcox arm, the push button, lets you go from left to right eye with the flick of a button. So, um, you know, given the situation, if you want to kick it from left to right, um, you have the ability to do so. And, um, you know, I, like I said, each user, you're going to find it much, which one's going to be more comfortable for you.